Hey what is up guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video I'm bringing you another Gran Turismo 7 money making method. So this car has been kind of around a while now and known as definitely one of the go to grind cars. I kind of wanted to see if you know we could kind of change up that method and maybe make it a zero stop car. I know the main strategy is a one stop strategy but I thought you know what let's see if we can kind of mess around with it and get it to basically be a zero stop car and i did achieve that so you know you're going to kind of see how to go about that strategy in this video so if you want to buy this car yourself it is currently actually returned and um, when i made this video it wasn't in the legendary dealer but it is all of a sudden came back on the same day it's 330k so very very reasonably priced for possibly one of the best money making cars in the whole game and um, from what i gather it works at a bunch of events so yeah definitely go and grab one i've personally got now two of these things uh one for the more meta method and one for this method so for the zero stop this is what we're going to use we're going to use sports hard tires none of this bit needs touching really apart from the differential you want at 5 29 and 5. you then want the downforce at 150 150. you want the ecu put at 90 make sure you've got the fully customizable and just set it at 90 like you can see the ballast you want at 94 the ballast positioning at minus 49 and the power restrictor we're not going to need to touch Make sure you've got the fully customizable racing transmission and just set that at 320. As you can see, none of this needs touching. We're not using the turbo version. And this is a problem I ran into was the fact that I had the racing crankshaft installed. Um, don't do that if you don't want to. It's completely up to you. So this is where this car mainly excels at as well as Le Mans. It is the Tokyo Expressway and that is where we're going to head for the World Touring Car 600 event. So we're back to Tokyo finally. Obviously this event kind of overlooked since the uh, 600pp uh, Tomahawk got patched. So this is how we're going to run it. You want your traction control at 3 for around about the first 3 to 4 laps. Uh, this is because this car is not too great in the wet weather. Um, but I definitely recommend just putting a little bit of traction on. Uh, we're going to leave the power at 1. You don't really need to worry too much about that. As you can see just use your slipstream and kind of work your way up through the field on the run up to the first corner. Just be aware in the wet weather to brake a little bit earlier. Um, the brakes on this car aren't very, very good. Um, so just be kind of aware that you're going to need to brake a little bit earlier than you probably usually have to in something like the Aston Martin, etc. So obviously not running the turbo. The main thing we're kind of trying to do is just um, basically maintain position for the first lap. Don't try and push too hard and put yourself in the barrier. Um, obviously this is an event where penalties are notorious to be given for even the slightest touch of that barrier um, So kind of just try and hold position and just push where you can just be sensible about it And um, obviously keep an eye on your fuel levels and um, but you shouldn't need to overly worry about them You shouldn't really have to do too much in the sense of fuel saving just now So I don't usually drive with any assist on I usually find it very awkward when the traction is constantly kicking in But I can kind of see why it's recommended for the first few laps of this event Obviously the surface being as wet as it is you mainly just kind of want to stay out of trouble um, You know, it's an older car. It hasn't got all these goodies that some of these cars we're racing against has and um, so yeah, I kind of thought you know what I'll definitely run traction just to kind of keep myself safe and uh, Just keep myself out of trouble really if you do hit into penalties, then it can really hinder your run basically and um, obviously we're just grinding money So I've got the AI on easy But a lot of you may know the AI is a bit awkward at Tokyo and can really you know basically kick you in the butt if you're uh, not focusing or if you just make constant mistake after mistake so a lot of this event is kind of just you know being sensible really timing your overtakes and just being a bit careful when the weather is wet because you know it is a nightmare it's notorious for them first few laps being really sluggish really slow and a little bit overly slippy uh, depending on which you know kind of build we're using and like I said with using the older car you just want to kind of keep yourself out of trouble and just kind of realize that this is older machinery it's not going to break as good it's not going to kind of have that grip as good obviously we're not using racing tires here and um, so there is a you know a bit less grip than usual 
So with this kind of zero stop build we've got going here, it's going to very consistently lap between 216 and 218. Um, it's all about kind of maintaining your tyres and getting in those quick laps as the track dries out. At this point, you know, going on to lap four, you want to just take that traction control off. The base of the surface should be dry enough for you to just run quite cleanly and quite smoothly without it on. Um, lap five, as you can see, we're just kind of taking advantage of the slipstream. Obviously, we don't have a massive high-end top speed. Um, obviously, we've kind of dropped that and sacrificed that for the name of fuel consumption. Um, so a lot of it is kind of relying on the slipstream to you know get up to those higher speeds. For me, this car really started working with me around about halfway point. Um, obviously, the track is pretty much dry at this point with a little bit of a wet line, but it's very easy to kind of just ignore that. Um, but the car definitely started to really show where it you know it shines, where it always does shine, even if you're using the more meta build which is obviously a lot, I guess, more quicker on one lap pace, um, but obviously requires you to basically use a bit of fuel, uh, fuel management and obviously do the pit stop. So this car is basically just notorious for very, very grippy, very, very quick. Um, and it kind of shows here um, that once you learn how to drive it, the fact that it's a five speed um, <laughs> and such, you kind of learn how to sort of get used to this car. Um, it is kind of weird at first. I had a bit of a love-hate relationship with it until recently Where I just could not get this car to work with my driving style But you know currently I'm basically loving this car and I can see why it's so popular So lap onto lap 7 and a bunch of other cars are starting to pit now This is where you're going to try and stretch your legs because obviously we are not pitting And as you're going to see here the rest of the field are going to finally you know take their pit stop and you're pretty much going to just try and extend your lead at this point really um, yes they're on easy but like I said the AI just seems to be a little bit more difficult around here than a lot of the other races really um, and it's all kind of about taking advantage of anything you can so if they box you try not to box um, obviously we don't have the straight line speed and they will make some time up down that big long straight so as you can see the fuel consumption is pretty much manageable at this point we're doing very very well we haven't really had to save fuel we've just been driving around normally um, you know hoping and praying for a, a zero stop strategy or something not to go wrong at this point uh, tokyo seems to be a little bit cursed in that sense and um, but you know just be careful of your tie weight around this point around about a lap 9 10 and um, it does seem to kind of drop off a bit and just become a little bit unstable at the rear uh, but it is not too bad really you know it should be pretty much manageable for anyone with you know any experience really in uh, using different cars to grind money so coming up to the final part of this event now and as you can see we've only got a few corners left obviously as you can see with the lap times they've kind of been pretty consistent really um, I do feel like if you get used to this car you can easily knock it down a few seconds as well um, it's kind of just all about how you kind of feel about driving and um, sometimes these kind of cars take a bit of time to get in used to but once you've kind of got them you'll, you'll pretty much nail the events no problem I can kind of see why this car is so popular and um, I will eventually cover the more meta method um, but it's probably been overdone at this point that's kind of why I thought you know what I'll give it a try but I'll kind of make it a zero stop strategy so here's the overall time 27 minutes 46.7 um, not too bad really um, obviously it's not about kind of fastest laps or anything with this car it's all about kind of being able to do it on a zero stop really um, and it's all about the fuel consumption of the car and um, would I recommend this over the more meta strategy probably not but for those of you that hate doing the pit stop every you know time you run this event um, I definitely kind of recommend it for you guys and it, I guess it's more on par with the Chevy Z06 I covered for me the highlight of Tokyo you know personally is still the Aston Martin but again a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with that car as well so a massive thank you to everyone that basically you know pushed me to go back and look at this car again obviously like I said I do have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it um, I've never been the biggest fan of it, but it's, it has started to grow on me over the last couple of days. And the fact that it's back in the legendary dealer and it's so popular for grinding money, I would 100% recommend picking it up as soon as you can. 
So I know I've said this before, but I am wanting to kind of branch out a bit. Um, Grand Turismo 7 is kind of being a little bit stagnant at the minute. And as much as I love making these money guards for you guys and taking recommendations, obviously I do want to make other things as well. So keep your recommendations coming. Uh, it just may take me a little bit longer to kind of look into them. So that's going to be it today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you later.